Got to be 18, fit. Jumble lock fence, bareback. Nothing too much. Hey, Nate! Get up there! So the British thought they could take Gaza with tanks. They thought they could terrify us. Welcome to Palestine, Captain Reichert. Thank you, sir. The High Command has sent you to congratulate me on my earlier victory in Gaza. News of your triumph arrived after my departure, but I'm sure they would wish me to do so. Of course. But all congratulations are due to the British general, Sir Archibald Murray. For he had captured the town, but he's such a dunderhead he didn't know, and withdrew his troops. There's little joy in the defeat of an unworthy opponent. Cavalry, sir. They are not cavalry, Captain. They are Australian light horse, mounted infantry. You can tell them by the plumes in their hats. They're formidable soldiers, but the English don't know how to use them. Wait till the light horse dismount, Colonel, then open fire. On the men or the horses, sir? Why, on the men? You don't understand, do you? You have so much to learn about war in the desert, you and General Murray both. We're fighting in a desert. 
warfare in its purest form with one inescapable rule. Men and horses must drink. And each time Gaza is attacked, we hold out for one or two days at most. And the British are defeated by the desert. General Chevelle sends his compliments to General Sir Archibald Murray and all that guff. Yes, sir. We are running out of time. We are running out of water. I am running out of patience, and with it, my capacity to obey orders I cannot believe in. Let me see it. Leave it with me, Charlie. Last time, Larry didn't know he'd won. Hold! Not much. You okay to rest the horses? No, mate. We'll keep going. Ours is only about 15 miles. Hear the artillery? Orders didn't say anything about us going into action. Yeah, I know. But the Khan units will be on the sidelines. My bet is Chevelle's gonna need every man he can get. This regiment sat out enough damn battles. <laughs> easy, easy, Ginger. You can hear those bloody guns. He's getting excited. Don't blame him. You know why they've been keeping us away from the Turks? They reckon we'll terrify the buggers to death and ruin a whole bloody war. <laughs> You're a bloody beauty, Taz, and no mistake. Oh, what's up with you, you great bloody lump of Irish misery? I'm just thinking. Oh, you're thinking, mate? What about? About why they're keeping us out of it. Why, well, I reckon it's the Colonel. Bullshit, Frank Bush is a real goer. More guts than a bull hand. Yeah, but he's a brand spanking new Colonel. And he's a young bloke. And the old pommy brass don't trust him. So we're asking Charlie again. Going to give the horses a spell? Listen. Can't hear anything. That's right. What's the news from Gaza? Another bloody disaster, sir. They reckon on 18,000 casualties. Good one to be out of, Bill. They're all good ones to be out of. But it's a bugger of a way to spend a war. This place we're heading for, can you? Do you reckon there'll be a pub there? Oh, will you look at that. <laughs> English soldiers. Now, look, Scotty, I plan to get this stripe back quick smart, so I don't want to get involved in any stupid bloody stout. Frank, have you ever known me to start a fight? No, but by God, I've seen you finish a few. Come on. <laughs> nice to meet you, mate. Cheers for the light horse. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. I reckon.
Haven't you boys got yourselves knocked about even worse than us? What'll it be? No, thanks, mate. We're just looking for somebody. Yeah, that's right. Hey? We seen you. Australia will be there. Hey, fellas. What are we looking for? Australia will be there. Australia will be there. Bloody beautiful. Not a patch on those sunsets at Gallipoli, eh? Every one better than the last. Uh, never knew if you'd live to see another one. It's nearly two years ago. Jesus. We've been away nearly three years. I know those kids when you get home, Tess. Bloody kids. Wondered why it was so peaceful over here. There's no bloody missus and kids to drive you crazy. Your missus was all right. Yeah, she's all right. Now, if I had a fiance like Frank's three years, it'd seem a hell of a time. <laughs> she's worth waiting for. Worth waiting for? I tell you, when he gets back home, the second thing he'll do is take his bloody boots off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chevelle's been given command of the whole desert column. The regiment will be moving out in ten minutes. Thing. We'll show those Turks a thing or two, eh? These are our trenches, Bull. They end on the Wadi Gaza. Past here, Turkish cavalry from Beersheba. We're taking them on? If they give us half a chance. We've got the best regiment in the brigade. Now we're going to prove it. Land of milk and honey. You know, why the hell did it take Moses and the Jews 40 years to get here from Egypt? I reckon they knew what they were in for. What do you think? Lovely spot for a reception committee. Yeah. We'll split up and have a look around.
Are you all right, Frank? Get the saddle off, Taz. There's a big mob of Bedouin up the gully, Sarge. Sid, cover us. Come on, boys. Split up. Geez, that leg looks bad, Frank. It's the horse, Ted. OK, he's never going to make it back to camp, mate. I'll have to put him down. No. No, I'll do it. Please. Frank. How's Frank for Wather? Oh, well, uh, not too bad. Uh, he's gone to the hospital at Tana Rish. I thought we could replace him in that section with Vic Smith. He's another Gallipoli man. Can't afford it, Porky. Do you realize there are only 60 men left with us who are at Gallipoli? <laughs> no, sir. I didn't. All right, so I should split them up. Well, that's a bit pity. Yes, I agree. But we'll put one of the reinforcements in Frank's section. New recruit. Oh, they won't like that. Too bloody bad. Lads, this is uh, Dave Mitchell, Corporal Tazpool. Hey, Scotty Bolton. Dave. Till a bit. Shall I? Aye. Right. Oh, I'll let the boys show you the ropes, Dave. Good to have you in the squadron. Where are you from? Melbourne. A city boy? Well, not really. I'm from Preston, you know, an outer suburb. My dad's got a dairy farm. Oh, it makes all the difference. You better dump that gear somewhere. You can put it in my bivvy. Frank's gear's in there. Well, he won't be needing it for a while. All right, till he gets back. And I suppose we better go fix you up with a horse. How long has he been off the boat, Sergeant? About three weeks. All right, to gallop him then? Fine. Not bad at all. Only trouble is Turks don't stand still. Neither do rabbits. <laughs> Scotty, you're not Scotch, are you? <laughs> no. Then why do they call you Scotty? Because I'm Irish. What line of work were you in? Engine driver. Steam engines. And Taz and Chiller? What about them? We were all at a sawmill. Up in the Otways. You were all good mates? Well, I was only there for a while. <coughs> what do you think of the tacker? It's fine. 
But it's not what you're used to in the outer suburbs. You don't expect fancy food in the army? Well, this is fancy food, son. You get out there and it's bully beef and biscuits. Rotten, greasy bully beef. Biscuits you can't break with a shovel. Smelly, bloody water from Arab wells. No wood to boil the billy. This is real fancy. Why don't you go tell the cook, Taz? It'll make his day. Well, there's no point letting anybody get the idea it's all beer and Skittles out here. Go for a gallop, shoot a target, expect the medal. It's no bloody picnic. I know that, Taz. What do you know? Fresh out of bloody school. What the hell do you know about war? I know it isn't going to be over in six months. Are you saying that's what we thought, are you? It's what my brother thought when he joined up. Well, he learned different, didn't he? Yeah. He's dead. Easy! I eat their children! Piss off! Keep your eyes on. Uh, righto, Scotty. Just a couple of minutes now. G'day. Where's the fruit and flowers? Well, I've got something better here, mate. A letter from home. It's probably from Joyce. <laughs> it's not her writing. What is it, mate? Out loud. Go on, Taz. This is hard to write, but somebody's got to tell you, and nobody else seems up to it. Joyce married a bloke from Warwick Nabeel about six months ago. Shifted to Geelong, no one's heard a word since. Oh well, better off without her, eh? Only thing I'm crooked on is she's she's kept taking my pay a lot, but all right, boys, you'll have to go now. Right, our sister. We'll uh, be seeing you, Frank. You'll be back in no time, mate. Eh? Yeah, you bet. I'll have to watch you. Yeah, you're a free man. Can I get you anything, Corporal? No, sister. There's nothing I want. Give that letter a rest. You wear it out. Missing home? A bit. Ah, oh, you're lucky. Most of us miss home a hell of a lot. <laughs> Good night, Scotty. I'll be seeing you. What's happening, Taz? Turk's got a railway out to the east. Brass reckon it's cramping our style a bit, so we're gonna blow it up. They're sending the whole regiment to do that? They're sending two bloody divisions, son. What do we do? What we're bloody told.
Turkish cavalry. What do you reckon, Paul? Watch your step, mate. They've been at this cave for hundreds of years. This is your first try. A troop for covering fire. B troop for dismounted frontal attack. Execute when C and D troops are ready for a mounted advance to the left flank. When up the spout, son, don't forget your safety catch. Now, look, you just stick with me and Scotty, and you're sweet as a nut. Chiller's the best horse handler in the regiment, Dave. You'll get him through Hallam back if he need be. B troop! Thanks! That is! Hey, Rapid fire! I've, um, I've just had some bad news. Frank died in Cairo yesterday. Jesus, what happened? Well, the wound turned septic. Uh, they, uh, they had to take the leg off, and, uh, and it just got worse, and, uh, they sent him to Cairo. I know what you lads thought about him, and, uh, Truly really sorry. Thanks, sir. Well, it could be a mistake, couldn't it? I mean, they make mistakes all the time. No. I saw it in his eyes the day he read that letter. Life just went out of him. Oh, shit. You're talking bullshit! What are you looking at? What are you cleaning the bloody rifle for? Gonna shoot some rabbits? We lose the best bloody maker to hope to find and get some gutless little wonder. Long time since we've had a death in the regiment. I'm afraid we'll have more pretty soon. Not another attack on Gaza? No, at least not yet. But we're stepping up patrol activity. It's called getting the Turk to show his teeth. We're moving camp to Tel El Farah. Uh, towards Yeshiva. Padre, what do you know about Beersheba? Oh, very ancient settlement. Thousands of years old when Christ was a child. It's founded by Abraham. 
the will there. Still there today. The well of Abraham. He swore a kind of a treaty over it with one of the local rulers. So he called it the well of the oath. Beersheba. Always about water out here, isn't it? Hasn't the boys returned from wood details yet? No, sir. Pretty of it, aren't? Makes a bit of a change riding around in a wagon. <laughs> well, somebody had to water the horses. Settled in all right? Yes. Yes, sir. Taz uh, can be a bit hard to live with sometimes. But he's a damn fine soldier. I know, sir. I'm uh, learning. Right. Good work. Sorry about the horses, Sarge. Oh, sorry. No, we'll have them rounded up in about ten minutes. They're alive. Thank you. Yeah, good on you, mate. Good day. Believe you fell off your horse. Good on you, son. <laughs> Hand's pretty crook. Yeah, got to put some carbolic on it. It's really burning. It's doing good. Well, that's what it will be. You got the horses back all right? Oh, what do you know? As soon as the plane went, Dave, the four of them trotted back to the line, just stood there and waited to be hooked on. Nice little gelding, that horse of yours. Fitted in real good. Tell you what, there's an issue of Bucksy beer on. Come and have a snort. Then I'll put some lead back in your pencil. All we have to do then is find you something to scribble on, eh? <laughs> You're a beauty. <laughs> is it prayed for you, boy -o? I'm all right, Scotty. Just give us a hand with my saddle. You can't even lift it. Sick rage, where are you going?
You're in hospital. Adela Rich. Adela Rich. Mm-hmm. Horses. Are you all right? Wonderful to see you up. Yeah, it's good. You'll be back with the regiment in no time. I suppose so. You're not anxious to get back? Not anxious, no. I miss you very much. Thank you. But that's just the way it seems here. Once you get back among your mates, I won't seem so important. Yes, you will. Especially then. What is it, Dave? Out there. It's nothing. It's... Well, you know, no more good tucker and, and bars. That's all. Same old army life. It's more than that. It's much more. Than Missing home. Don't you trust me to try and understand? We were on a stunt. I had a Turk in my sights. And I didn't shoot. I keep telling myself it's just because there didn't seem any need. But I didn't want to shoot a man in the back. And what's wrong with that? I worry that I'm just making excuses. I won't be able to kill. I'm sure a lot of soldiers feel like that. But I wonder how many of them have the, the courage to confront their feelings. <sighs> courage? Funny sort of courage. I don't even have the nerve to ask you out. She would. Really? Of course. <laughs> what do you know about that? That's marvelous. You better get better first. Well, I'm better already. Dave, you've been really sick. You were delirious for two days. Maybe you still are. No. I know what I'm saying. as soon as I can.
I thought I'd bring a friend to meet you. He's looking great. Well, I've given him a bit of exercise. I tried to ride like an out of suburban bloke so he wouldn't think nothing was wrong. <laughs> Thanks, Scotty. Good to have you back, boyo. Pokey, I want to make a personal reconnaissance out toward Beersheba. I need a horse holder. Stan's got a couple of days' leave. Well, what about uh, young Mitchell? Well, he's just about due to come off light duties. Mitchell, good. Ask him to collect my horse from the lines and report with an extra rifle. 0900. Wondering about the rifle, son? Yes, sir. Well, if we got close enough to the Turks for my revolver to be of any use, we'd both be in a lot of trouble. Bedouin, sir! There's a British officer with them. Or perhaps someone wearing a British uniform. Coming this way. Get back down to the well and tie your horse up. Then back here, quick, smart. Yes, sir. All right, son. Now you listen to me. You cover that bloke, and if he makes one suspicious move, you shoot him. Right? Yes, sir. Friends of yours? Friends of ours, Colonel. I didn't expect to find a British officer alone in this sector. Well, I could say the same, sir. Ah, oh, but you see, Major, I'm not quite alone. Where are you from? Headquarters. Which headquarters? Cairo. Of course. Take a long time to check. Yes, I suppose it would. Colonel, I would feel a good deal happier if that man wouldn't point that bloody thing at me. You hand me your revolver, and we'll see what we can do about it. Very slowly. By the landing. You, Major. <sighs> Are you going to be in the firing squad? A joke, Private. Not a very good one, I admit. What you were looking for? Possibly. 
Brand new tunic made by an Egyptian tailor. And brand new papers made out to a major minor target. <laughs> the name is Danish, not German, as you so obviously suspect. And if I was German, would I use such an un-English name? Everything is new because I was torpedoed on my way to Palestine. I lost all my kit. Very plausible story, Major. But I will check up with headquarters in Cairo. I'd rather you didn't. I believe you. For a very good reason. Which I can't really discuss in front of an enlisted man. <laughs> Thanks, Mitchell. Good work, sir. Well, it is very embarrassing. I am in charge of intelligence for the new Commander-in-Chief, the man who is to replace Sir Archibald Murray. Only at the moment, Sir Archibald does not know that he is being replaced. And who is the new Commander-in-Chief? General Sir Edmund Allenby. General Sir Edmund Allenby, Lieutenant Colonel Boucher. Colonel. My second in command, sir, Major Rankin. Sir. Major. I believe you've met Major Minotago. We have, sir. Colonel. Look at the bastard. Typical bloody idiot, pommy brass. Wouldn't know a horse from a bloody camel. Well kept line, Colonel. The horses are in good condition. Perhaps, would you say, a fraction too good? Well, normally I would, sir. But in the next day or so, I'm taking the whole regiment out into the country near Beersheba. They'll need every ounce of condition they've got. Oh, no reconnaissance? No, sir. The Turkish cavalry have ambushed some light horse patrols. We're going to take them on at their own game. Really? What did you have in mind? The road from Beersheba runs past some ruins here, at Kesif. Each morning, a large Turkish patrol passes there on the way to water. We're going to hide one troop in the ruins under Major Rankin, and three troops on this ridge is fatal.
gutsy bastard, Abdul. Haydi, gel arkadaş. Sergeant, six men to kill those horses, bring in any wounded. The rest of you, cover that ridge. Come on, Mitchell. There's one, I think. You check it. What the hell happened? Don't know, Sarge. Well, help me get this bloke in. Now, sir? I think they know we're here. <laughs> Poor bastard. He's got it through the lungs. Well, is there anything we can do? He'll just drown his own blood. Major. I must make the point, sir. This is a rest camp, but some military standards must be maintained. Shorts must not be worn. I'll pass the order on to my men, sir. No shorts. Gotta do something about it. Bluey Hampton reckons the kid just froze while this Turk coming in with a saber. Hell, he's gonna get himself killed. Are you worried about Dave or yourself? All right. Yeah. I want to get back home. So does Chiller, and so do you. And the way he is, that kid's a weak bloody link in the section. He's a nice kid. He's got guts, all that. But Jesus, he's supposed to be a soldier. He's got to be able to kill a man. If he can't, too bloody bad. Piss off, Dave. So, you're going to tell him? I know what you mean, Tess. I'm sorry I let you down. Oh, look, son. You haven't let anybody down. It's just... How the bloody hell do you say it? You're not cut out to be a soldier. Now, you know that, don't you, hey? hey? I suppose I do, yeah. So important to me. My family. You know, my brother. I really wanted them to be proud of me. 
You have to believe one thing, Dave. It isn't a matter of cowardice, or not being a real man, whatever that is. I don't believe that I could kill. Nobody expects you to, sir. Well, that's true. But if you transferred to the field ambulance, say a mounted stretcher bearer, well, nobody would expect you to kill, would they? No. You'd be unarmed. Medical corps aren't allowed to carry weapons. Often in the thick of battle, doing a vital job that takes a lot of guts. If you like the idea, I could talk to Major Lawson. I better take these back to the armorer. Here, I'll look after that. Yeah. Thanks, Terrence. You come and have a yarn with us now and again. I'll do that, Scotty. New blokes drop into the field ambulance. Any time. Sure. Righto. Hey, beaut. Well, I'll be seeing you. After yourself, boy. Take care, mate. Hey. I feel like getting pissed. Every time you get pissed, you hit somebody. All right, then I feel like hitting somebody. It's the best thing, Jiller, isn't it? I suppose it is, yes. Oh, I mean, it's best for the kid, isn't it? You know, it practically saved his life. Yeah. I suppose so, yeah. yeah. Jesus, I'm sick of this bloody hell. What I want is basically very simple. I want the Turks to think we're going to attack Gaza again. Actually, we strike at the other end of the line, at Beersheba. We stop trying to break the lock. We take off the hinge. But it must be a complete surprise, and the town must fall in one day. Otherwise, my army has run out of water. As you say, sir. Basically simple. I can arrange for certain documents to fall in the hands of the Turks, indicating that any attack on Beersheba would be a feint. A decoy by a small force, designed to draw the attention away from an attack on Gaza. That much is easy. Making them believe that the documents are genuine That could be the trick. I didn't write about this. You're not sorry? <laughs> not a bit. Hell, it's great, a uh, few bunch of blokes. Plenty of things to do. I'm, you know, really happy. But you still think you failed, somehow? I don't know, Anne. I wonder what my family will think. My friends back home. I wonder if... Morning, Major. Morning. Well, I see there'll be no more firing squads for you. Hmm? No, sir. I'm looking for the matron. I... Unless, perhaps, you could help me, nurse. Hmm? 
If I can, sir. Would you write your name for me? <laughs> I don't understand, sir. No, of course you don't. Please. Charming. Thank you, nurse. Thank you very much. I might see you later then. Trooper? Strange man. Who is he? Just a pommy officer. You ask me, they're all a bit bloody weird. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you still talk like a light horseman. I still am a light horseman. Of course. You see? Even you do it. So, I'm as thoughtless as everybody else. Dave. What other people say or even think doesn't matter. You know what you want to do, and why you want to do it. The address is 36 Balham. That's B-A-L-H-A-M. Gardens, London, SW. Dated the 21st of August, 1917. Now, begin. Dearest, I have wonderful news. No. You write the letter. Imagine that you've just had a baby and that you are writing to the father. Don't think of me. Um, think of someone Someone you love. I can't. You can. I know that you can. You haven't seen him for many months. You may never see him again. He might never see his child. Uh, imagine that. And, uh, well, write what you feel. How I wish you were here now. I am longing for you, as I have ever since you left me. And I would love to show you our little baby son. He is so good. You mustn't worry about either of us. I'm getting stronger every day, and doctor says that baby couldn't be better. I would have sent you a telegram. Of course. You did. And I, uh, that is he, would have replied. It would have taken about three days. If it had been you arriving here instead of the telegram, how lovely that would have been. I look forward so very much to the day when we can hold our little son and be together for the rest of our lives in peace. Goodbye, my darling. Nurse says I mustn't tire myself by writing too much, but I will write a longer letter very soon. Take care of yourself and please, Please come back to us. Your loving wife, Anne. Baby sends a kiss to Daddy.
charming. Everything I could have wanted. Anybody home? I wasn't told you were coming. No, you weren't. One of those hush-hush jobs. You know, real boy's own paper stuff. The sort of thing that makes light horsemen think that pommy intelligence officers are a bunch of schoolboys playing wizard japes on the enemy. <laughs> uh, but this one's different, very. It could open the way to Jerusalem. Well, what can I do? I need an escort for a sortie out towards Beersheba. Well, I'd be delighted. Well, no, no, no. It's not quite as simple as that. No, I need an enlisted man, a good man, a man that knows the country and can look after himself. And me, come to that. But above all, a man who thinks pommy officers are a bunch of idiots and can be relied on to gossip. I think we can manage that. We're getting into enemy territory, sir. Yes. I thought we would be. You see, I do have to get as far east as I can. Can I ask why, sir? Of course. You see, old boy, migratory birds are a hobby of mine. And we don't know very much about the migration habits of the stork in Palestine. You know, we see them fly north in the spring, but we don't see them fly south in the autumn. Now, my theory is that their southerly route is further to the east. We're riding out here to see storks flying south. Hopefully. Look, Major, it's a bloody miracle we haven't run into a Turkish patrol. We better turn back, sir. This really is hostile territory, then. Oh, you can take my word for it. I'll just rest my horse here for a moment, and then we'll turn back. Hmm? Care for a sandwich? No, thanks, sir. I'll just sit up here, keep an eye open, you know. Major, man up! Turks! What the fuck is it? Major! Coming, Corporal, coming. Oh dear. Oh, dear. 
Papers make it clear. Two brigades will make a limited attack on us here in Besheba to divert attention from a major offensive against Gaza. But this could be a trick. Planted information. That is possible, Colonel Ismet. But this letter from the officer's wife, speaking of their new baby, it's from the heart. Not something to deliberately part with. Now, General von Kressenstein has made me responsible for all intelligence operations in this sector. And I stake my military career on it, Colonel. The loss of that letter was accidental. Therefore, the information is genuine. We will assume that any attack on Beersheba is a mere decoy. But I shall plant explosives in all the wells, ammunition dumps, and railway installations. If they capture Beersheba, they will win a broken, burning ruin. Their army will be stranded here without water. If this is a trick, they have set a gigantic trap for themselves. Z day is the 31st of October. British infantry will make night marches against Bathsheba and attack at dawn from the south and the west. The Desert Mounted Corps will circle around Bathsheba an attack from the east, from the desert. It's our responsibility to capture the town's wells intact. How will we carry enough water, sir? Brigadier Grant's asked the key question in the entire operation. The answer's simple, gentlemen, we won't. Of course, every man has his water bottle, one quart. But there'll be nothing for the horses until we capture the wells at Bathsheba. They'll have to go 24, perhaps 30 hours without a drink. And if we fail to take Beersheba in one day? We cannot fail. What are you doing, Tess? It's just a letter. A letter? <laughs> to the wife, you know. Cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't written for some time. A man can write a bloody letter, can't he? Of course. Yeah. You're moving out too. Everybody is. Something really big this time. Uh, Beersheba. Taz found out. What'll the regiment be doing? What we're told. Good luck, Scotty. Oh, I never have to wish an Irishman good luck. Comes natural. Good luck yourself. We'll have a beer when we get back. Any word what we'll be doing? We'll be in bloody reserve, don't you know? I really had a feeling about this one. I suppose I still do. This one's different, Bull. Not just bigger. Ah, come on. Hey, Nobby! Nobby! I want to post this letter. What the bloody hell can I do about it? Well, you're the postal orderly. Look, Tess, just shove it in your kit until the stunt's over, OK? I'll take a test. Good on you, Chilla. Thanks, mate. This will be a solid match. Not talking once we're moving.
British artillery is right on time. Well, I just hope they don't hit the wells. We'll move to cover in the wadi down there. Certain of that. All right, keep me advised. There is at least a division of cavalry on the eastern flank, as well as a large infantry force to the south. Your men have been deceived, Colonel. A clever illusion. Men and horses in constant movement, making dust. They're nothing more than large patrols. The main attack will fall in Gaza, and we must not be tricked into thinking otherwise. Sergeant Major? Yes, sir. Men can smoke, off saddle for 20 minutes, then remain in readiness for immediate movement. Another message from von Kressenstein, sir. Refusing reinforcements or permission to evacuate and insisting that only two brigades of cavalry are involved in the attack. Ah, they bought it! They bought it. Well done, Miner. Well, now it's up to Shubal. The infantry are gaining control of the southern front, sir. Yes, they've done well. Anzacs are taking a hell of a beast. I reckon I'd rather be shot at than just grill in this bloody wadi. Go easy on the smoking chiller. It dries you out too much. Where are we going to go for water, Tess? Be a Sheba, mate. thought. You'd want to be pretty bloody thirsty, eh? <laughs> Wouldn't you, eh? Uh, <laughs> pretty thirsty. <laughs> you still got a feeling about this one? I don't know. Well, I've got a feeling. It's taking too long. Too bloody slow. How long would it take us to get the water? Enough for the whole corps. 12 hours. It's nearly two days since the horse has got a drink. without a paddle. Less than two hours to sunset. I want to see General Hodgson and his commanding officers. Sir. Colonel! Hello! Well, Captain. Aerial reconnaissance confirms that we are under attack by two to three divisions of cavalry and an infantry corps. 50,000 men. And I am holding Beersheba with 4,000. While our respected General von Kressenstein sits in Gaza denying me reinforcements. Yes? The enemy has taken Tel El Saba, sir. 
all remaining reserves to the eastern trenches. Order divisional engineers to destroy the wells and water storages. With respect, Colonel. That is against the orders of General von Kressenstein. That is true, Captain. A general who still believes we are being attacked by patrols. All right. The wells are the responsibility of your esteemed countrymen. And you. As you are well aware, our advance on Bathsheba has been seriously delayed. Fortifications of unknown strength still face us across a plain of some three miles. And the sun sets in one hour. By which time, some of our horses will have been without water for 48 hours. Unless we take the wells of Bathsheba intact, we not only face defeat, but a military disaster. What are your views? Sir. Yes, Grant. I believe my brigade could take the town if given a free hand. I must know what you propose. To make a mounted charge against the eastern defences, sir. I have two regiments, the 4th and 12th, close at hand. General Chevelle, if there's to be a charge, then surely it must be made by my cavalry, who are armed with swords. Brigadier Grant's men are mounted infantry. They are, Fitzgerald. We're constantly reminded of that fact. But... Sixty thousand men have failed to take this town in twelve hours. How can eight hundred horsemen possibly succeed in less than one hour? You don't believe they can do it? No one has ever attempted a cavalry charge against entrenched infantry supported by machine guns and artillery. It's unheard of, sir. Do you see any alternative in the time available? Well, no, sir, but Very I... well. Put Grant straight at it. Buggery fine, I mate. What's going on? We're gonna charge Bathsheba, mate. Jesus. Sir Harry? I must reiterate my opposition to this maneuver. You have.
Cavalry advancing on the eastern flank. They are not cavalry. They're Australian light horse. Oh! Wait until they dismount, then fire by order. Twenty-eight hundred meters. Australian light horse advancing on eastern defences. They seem to be deploying to charge. They won't charge. Twenty-six hundred meters. Meters. Hey! Who do you reckon shooting at us? The Turks or the silly bloody Poms?
Set your sights. 1,600 meters. Set your sights. 1,600 meters. He might. I'll check him. happening. Your clever little illusion has reached Beersheba. But what are you doing? The only sane thing. I am surviving. Damn you to hell! Blow up the wells. The demolition officer isn't here, sir. He has the number coding. Then blow up everything, you idiot. What's happened? The artillery fire. It must have broken the wires. Get out and repair them. Yes, sir.
Back to Australia? I reckon it will, mate. Fair enough. This is a back and roof again. Can you look after him for me, sir? Good work, Trooper. Hands right up there! Get that gun away! Right away! <laughs> if you can understand me, but I'd very much appreciate it if you'd give me the chance to blow your bloody head apart. Easy, man. Get him out of here. We only lost about 30 blokes. It's almost miraculous. Not if you're one of them, it isn't. 
Hey, Arch. Have you seen the field ambulance box? I don't bother Waddy. If you're looking for your mate. Yeah. They got knocked. How bad? Pretty bad. Excuse me, sir. Is Trooper Mitchell in this convoy? I remember the name, but we lost some of the lads on the way in. What does it say? They won't tell me. It says we're not going to lose you. <laughs> <laughs> 